Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is I'm Noah Hodgetts, and I'm from uh, Newton, Massachusetts. And my senior project titled MDI 2030, um, an analysis of options for making Mount Desert Island more sustainable is a response to a number of projects and initiatives currently taking place on the island. My goal was to answer the question, what is the most feasible approach to plan for environmental, economic, social, and social sustainability on MDI over the next 20 years? Uh, and, and, and in my time at COA, I've focused my studies on land use, law, policy, and planning. And my inspiration for this project um, was the work I did, as Sean mentioned, um, with residents of Town Hill, um, a rural village of Bar Harbor, in a land use planning class uh, taught by Isabel Mancinelli uh, to help them get started on the development of a mini plan for their village. I gained the knowledge of and passion for the residents while I uh, while I was working on this project, which provided the perfect foundation for me to get involved with a grassroots group helping to shape the future of the village of Town Hill a year later. And my work with citizens of Town Hill also helped me realize uh, that I should concern myself with helping to shape the future of the entire island, not just one neighborhood. And another inspiration, which I don't have time to go into now, um, was my recent trip to Denmark um, for the Copenhagen climate negotiations this past December. So I also realized that, that there was a unaddressed need to plan island-wide, considering that, are several, that there are several disparate sustainability efforts uh, currently happening. A um, couple include the greening of the, of the quiet side, the western side of the island's recent effort to green local businesses, and the Route 3 Reconstruction Task Force. Um, and the, in addition, there's also realized that there's no island-wide vision. Um, as well as a desire for the island by many people for the island to retain its unique values. And so, and so, and so to uh, prepare for the final report, um, I interviewed stakeholders of various efforts across the island. I got involved with multiple uh, ongoing sustainability initiatives and did extensive research uh, on sustainability planning efforts across the country. And the three sections of my project are first, a summary of six MDI island-wide initiatives, both the strengths and ongoing challenges of them. Uh, the second is a comparison and analysis of different approaches for sustainability planning over the next 20 years. And the final includes recommendations for the future. And I chose to focus, there's a lot of, a lot of different initiatives, but I chose to focus just on six island-wide um, efforts which have united all for the island's towns, and in some cases also Acadia National Park. Uh, not only because they are successful models uh, for working together, but also because they cover a range of topics um, which affect the entire island. And the six efforts I studied were the MDI High School, the MDI League of Towns, um, the MDI Tomorrow Process, the Island Explorer Bus System, the Acadia Disposal District, and the Island Housing Trust. And although each of these efforts and initiatives which I studied um, has different strengths and ongoing challenges, um, I found that they all had the following in common. Uh, they are all built upon diverse partnerships. They are all uh, successful because of a few dedicated individuals. They are all also rooted in the community, um, have buy-in from the island's municipalities, and in many instances also Acadia, uh, respond to a specific community need, rely on multiple sources of funding, have a formal organizational structure, are vital for the day-to-day -day operations of the island, provide an essential service uh, to visitors and citizens of the island, and finally, are rooted in regional collaboration. And for the third section, I chose to focus on the following six approaches uh, to sustainability planning. Um, problem by problem, regional governance, incorporation, of sustainability into each town's sustainability, into each, excuse me, into each town's comprehensive plan, um, a parallel process with local governments, such as the MDI Tomorrow Process, uh, designation of the community as a transition town or a Sierra Club cool community, and finally, creation of a collaborative island-wide sustainability plan. And for all these approaches, I analyzed existing studies in the context of MDI. And what I found, what I've concluded is that creation of 
of an island-wide plan is the most feasible approach to implement on Mount Desert Island. Um, first of all, because it's unrestrictive in focus and allows for diverse community input, and also because if done correctly, it places the focus on finding common ground as opposed to meeting the needs of specific interest groups. So with that in mind, um, some of the recommendations which I came up with for sustainability planning on MDI over the next 20 years uh, include to build off of existing collaboration efforts at the municipal level, to engage in collaborative planning, a process of engaging stakeholders in face-to-face -face dialogue to develop a plan that meets the interests of all affected parties, to involve municipal elected as well as park officials and a diverse range of stakeholders, uh, to focus on finding the common ground among interest groups, to create an action-oriented plan which is implementable via short, medium, and long-term goals, uh, to develop a shared vision of the island, and finally to create an agreement about how the plan's recommendations will be implemented. And over the past 10 weeks, um, I think as Sean mentioned in the beginning, um, I've also worked in COA's new sustainable enterprise incubator, the Hatchery, uh, to develop this project and see it become a reality. And I'm happy to report this morning that to date I've secured $5,500, um, $5,000 of which I've been awarded from the Hatchery uh, to begin this, to begin work on an island-wide planning process this fall uh, with community members. So with that in mind, um, some of the next steps are to hire a sustainability coordinator, either to establish MDI 2030 as a project of the college or to form, uh, to make MDI 2030 its own 501c3, uh, to establish formal relationships with groups currently working on sustainability-focused initiatives, uh, and to create maps for these groups, to establish a wiki um, online to centralize information about various projects, to establish a sustainability advisory board, and finally, to develop a 15 to 20 year sustainability action plan. And finally, I just wanna thank my academic advisor and project director, Isabel Mancinelli, um, the members of my senior project advising team, many of which are actually in the room this morning, um, all those um, I interviewed or who provided helpful information for this project, uh, as well as the Center for Applied Human Ecology. Uh, and so thank you for being there, and with that, I would take any questions. Would you comment on Hannaford Market's efforts in Town Hill? <laughs> um, I guess I'll just say this. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that I, when we got involved with the Town Hill project in, my, in the land use planning class, that was two years ago. Um, that was before, and George's question was, would I comment on the Hannaford efforts? Um, and so we, we went to the residents and gave a presentation about a ton of just general concepts which would become the foundation for the mini plan. Uh, then the following January, Hannaford came out of right field with a proposal to build a, what, 35,000 square foot supermarket. Um, there were a lot of residents that were uh, unhappy with that because they felt that the scale of it, of such a store or any store really didn't fit in with the scale of the neighborhood. Um, and so the group I worked with um, really focused its efforts on trying to make sure that it really got across to the rest of Bar Harbor that we need to maintain um, the scale of all, the village scale of all of Town Hill. And frankly, Hannaford's in my mind didn't, and, with, and a lot of people's minds didn't fit that scale. In, in developing your model, did you, yeah. did you find any uh, best practices that you studied uh, around the country of this kind of thing working well and, and a, a, a grouping, grouping of, or, or a way to, to develop the model that worked well? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, Lisa's question is, um, in my studies and research, did I find uh, any best practices of what worked especially well? Um, I guess a couple things on that note. I didn't look at best practices in terms of actually actual sustainability initiatives or actions. This was more focused at looking at the larger overall planning process. Um, some of the specific um, kind of well-run processes or plans which I studied were uh, New York City's Comprehensive Sustainability Plan, Plan YC, 
uh, which uh, Mayor Michael Bloomberg's office initiated. Um, that plan um, has been cited for its comprehensive nature, for tying together a lot of different efforts. Um, one thing I did find, which that plan has been criticized for in that process, is that it didn't involve enough uh, community participation. And so that's something that I would, you know, going forward with this, I really see needs to be at um, the center of this. One other thing quickly is that um, ICLE Local Governments for Sustainability has developed a sustainability uh, planning toolkit, uh, which several uh, municipalities and counties around the country have started to use to develop to go through this process. Uh, actually, a very similar question. I was wondering whether um, you compared and contrasted in your own mind um, an environment like Mount Desert Island with, with, with your own Newton, which is very active, uh, <laughs> Green Decade, uh, so forth and so on, but, but, but a city is yeah. more organized. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the question is, did I compare Mount Desert Island with my home city um, of Newton, Massachusetts, which in reference uh, has a population of about 83,000 people. Mount Desert Island has a population of about 10,000. Um, for this project, um, I really focused on Mount Desert Island, and one of the main reasons is that MDI is an island. Um, it has finite boundaries, um, and it's one ecological unit. Um, and so I really think there's an opportunity to do something on the island because of that, because we are on um, an island with four communities in a national park, um, which in some ways, you don't, if you're not on an island, you don't, it's, you just can't, it's a little more difficult to do that kind of thing. Just time for just one more, maybe. Am I right that you're going to hang in with this? You're going to stay with it? Yes, that's, yes. Uh, Ed's question is, am I going to hang in and stay with us? Yes. Uh, this summer, um, I'm actually going back to Boston uh, to work for a COA alum, Glenn Berkowitz. He's actually sitting in the back of the room. Um, on the development of um, his uh, wind farm in southeastern Massachusetts. Um, but I will be returning here this fall for the foreseeable future. Um, what I'm saying is probably about the next three to five years um, to get this process going uh, with the understanding that even though I love this place, I do plan to um, at some point pursue a master's in planning so that I can do this work professionally. And you know, who knows, come back here someday and hopefully see a transformed Mount Desert Island.